everyone. It's great to see you all. And um, this is a round table that is uh, hosted by the Sustainability Career Channel at Beloit College. My name is Tamara Katovjian, she, her, and I am an, a professor of English and environmental studies at the college, and I'm also sustainability channel coordinator, so it's been my privilege to work with the five people that you see here before, before you who will be talking about their work in the channel and their accomplishments and their goals and um, their thoughts about sustainability. And so um, this is entitled Beloit Students for a Sustainable Campus. Um, and uh, topics will include their work on campus initiatives involving food, waste, energy, and also how you can get involved in the sustainability channel. Um, and to learn more, I certainly encourage you to go to the channel's involvement fair that will begin right after this roundtable. It's um, happening three to four on the second floor of the powerhouse. And in addition, we'll reserve at least the last 15 minutes of this roundtable for Q&A from all of you, okay? Um, and so we have um, Martina Pulido, we have Amy Ward, we have Abe Gorham, we have Annette martinez Vasquez, and we have Sid Clark here. And what I want us to start with is for each of you to introduce yourselves. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your majors, your hometown, your academic year, your interests, and how you got involved, uh, how you first got interested, I should say, in the sustainability and environmental. So this is, this is fairly simple. So, turn it over to you all. Okay, I'll go first. I'm Martina, I'm a senior and an environmental biology major. Um, I'm from San Diego, California, and I came to the sustainability slash, um, I don't know, the outdoors, mainly through participating in MC my first year. Um, and that sort of led me, opened me up to other campus clubs that have more to do with sustainability, like, um, Revolving Loan Fund and um, uh, Green Team, yes, thank you, Amy. Um, and so from there, I just sort of found my way into sustainability and everything I do. Yeah. Um, my name is Amy. I use she/her pronouns. Um, I'm a senior here. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm double majoring in French and Environmental Studies. Um, and I got involved in sustainability on campus um, through proposing a sustainable project on campus my freshman year. Um, and I really looked up to all the upperclassmen who were involved in sustainability efforts, so people who were involved in Lung Fund, part of the Environmental Club, Green Team. Um, so I continued like going to events and stuff that uh, those organizations would host. And that kind of led me to Sustainability Channel. So, yeah. Um, hi, my name is Abhay. Uh, I'm a sophomore. I'm majoring in international relations and business. Uh, I first got involved in sustainability on campus through Bug, uh, our on campus garden. And uh, since then, I have been involved in OEC uh, and then Green Team, and also the Compost Team. Uh, and then I was also a summer worker for Bug. Hi, my name is Annette. I'm a first year. I use she, her pronouns. And the way I got involved with sustainability was um, through my high school. I proposed initiatives for a sustainable, um, a sustainable food waste in our cafeteria. I worked with our state representative at the time, and I just wanted to keep up that throughout college. Hi, my name is Sid. I'm a senior. I use they them pronouns. Um, I'm a double major in environmental justice and citizenship and international relations with a minor in Chris. Um, 
I got involved with sustainability by, um, like, I live in a from a beach town, so we were very aware of, like, waste um, and pollution. Uh, at least I was from a young age, and then I came to Beloit, and I got involved with the Beloit River Garden and compost team and the Terra recycling effort on campus. Um, from there, I joined Outdoor Environmental Club and the Sustainability Channel. Great, thanks all of you. And so, now what I think would be great is to um, have each of you tell us a bit about the initiatives that you focused on as a sustainability channel assistance. Um, what sorts of responsibilities and activities you've pursued, um, and also what you learned from them, um, the different skills and practices that uh, you needed to manage projects, to work as a team, and to promote sustainable change on campus. <laughs> so I know Annette and, Annette and Martina work together on a few things too, so there will be overlap there. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I've, um, I worked with Sid uh, the year that uh, this semester before COVID um, impacted us um, in creating eco to, in implementing eco to go again, which was a program that had already been a thing on campus, but it died down, and so Sid and I worked um, to bring the eco to go boxes back. Um, and if you don't know what eco to go is, essentially you're given a reusable plastic box to use at commons or DKs, and that way you reduce plastic waste. Um, and it was very simple and pretty cheap uh, to get started. Um, but unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't continue that. Um, and in the past, Sid and I have also worked on creating. Um, a uh, sort of food drive, taking extra food from commons and taking it to Caritas, which is the local food bank. Um, and so we worked really hard on that one as well, but then again, COVID um, stopped us from continuing that. And so my focus this semester has been trying to get that started again. Um, and on top of that, this semester, I also have been working with Annette to um, build the Beloit Food Sustainability Panel, which happened a few weeks ago, um, and it was very successful. Uh, um, Annette did a lot of work for that, and she can talk more about what she did. Um, but we did work together to connect with uh, the local community and bring them to campus and create a discussion that was um, valuable for connecting students to the local sustainability practice, practices. Yeah, so my main project is revolving loan fund. Oh my gosh, revolving loan fund. Um, so I'm the like student leader of revolving loan fund, and um, it's also called RLF. So if I use that, <laughs> it's a lot easier to say. Um, RLF has um, student members as well as faculty advisors and um, staff, specifically um, facilities people on the board, and the. The point of the fund is to provide um, money for um, students on campus, faculty, staff on campus to implement sustainable projects on campus. Um, and the idea is that by implementing a sustainable project, um, we'll be saving the school money and that is what will pay back the loan. So it's kind of like a cycle of a fund. Um, and I got involved in this from my freshman year. I actually implemented a project using Revolving Loan Fund. Um, I updated myself and like a group of other students updated the bathrooms in Meyer Hall, um, which the toilets like were very unsustainable and the urinals were like flushing every eight minutes, which don't know who allowed that. Um, so we updated that so we saved the college a lot of um, uh, money from just like water and also just saved a lot of water for the college. So that's actually still being paid back. I think it was over six years. I'm a senior now, so do the math on that. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the idea is like, usually it's like energy projects. So past examples have been like updating um, <coughs> windows in um, residential buildings or um, putting um, like LED lights in residential buildings. Um, 
but yeah, a lot of my job is to work with different stakeholders on campus, so I get additional support from Sustainability Channel, um, but I'm also working very closely with Tamara, who's the faculty advisor, um, as well as another advisor on campus. And we also work really closely with facilities since they're the ones who need to implement the project, and they have a really a good idea of what projects need to be done on campus since they work so closely within like, all the buildings and they kind of know the buildings really well. Um, so that's what I do for Volume 1 Fund. Um, for my project, I took on uh, the e-waste recycling drive that happened a few days back on campus. Uh, we partnered with uh, the library and information technology so LITS um, to host. Uh, it had already been done by LITS for quite a few years where they recycled the school's e waste, uh, but this time uh, we expanded it to faculty, staff, and students. Uh, uh, what we did was uh, we hosted it in the Science Center, we partnered with a company. Uh, who recycled e-waste uh, from outside, they came and picked the e-waste up from us. Uh, we had a lot of engagement this year. I hope uh, from, uh, in future years we can have more involvement from the students. Uh, a lot of faculty and staff in some departments uh, were very engaged this time. Uh, I learned how to navigate through bureaucracy and emails. Uh, <laughs> throughout the process, <laughs> that was one thing uh, that has stayed on. <laughs> uh, so that was sort of my project uh, uh, for the first half of the semester. For the second half, I'm partnering with SED, and we are looking to bring back uh, the compost team and working with uh, Bon Appetit. They will be uh, a better opportunity to talk on this. <laughs> great, great. And it was a huge pile of that I saw there at the end. I think you're saying that um, it's going to happen every semester, yeah, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we can have it every semester, but uh, it's, it's an annual thing for sure. Yeah. Um, so because I'm a first year, I haven't really done a lot of research on the initiatives on campus yet. Um, but I did, as Mark Martina mentioned, that um, I gathered information and planned the food, sustain the food sustainability panel that happened a few weeks ago where we talked with local um, businesses on food waste and how we could potentially reduce that here on campus. I also want to, in the future, um, work on eco to go but instead maybe just bringing, bringing students bring in their own containers to commons and that way it reduces plastic waste. I also hope to um, do a lot more with food waste and that way we can, I see that there's a lot of um, food waste, especially in commons where people just throw away excess food. Um, which is something I think that I could potentially work with. Um, um, yeah, part of us, we're also working on hopefully getting that back up and running and bringing that extra food to us. Um, as Martina mentioned, when we were sophomores, we worked on the Eco to Go initiative before COVID hit. Um, as well as we started organizing the Food Recovery Network, which is what like, bringing the food to Caritas is like, officially called. Um, right before COVID, um, from when I was a freshman, I was on the compost team, which collected food waste from like multiple, it was like over 10 locations on campus um, and brought it to Bug every single day. And then once COVID hit, that stopped. Um, and the initiative was handed down to me so Abhe and I are working together to get that started again and um, to involve Bon Appetit more. Um, we're actually working now to get not just food waste from like, students who are dining there, but also from the kitchens um, and bringing it to Bug. We're also working on having a physical space on the academic side of campus to showcase what compost is um, and to educate the general public on it. Um, since Bug is a little bit off campus, sometimes people don't know about it. 
or it's not there visually for people to be reminded of it. Um, so that's the effort that we're working on. Um, yeah. Great. So um, I also want to hear from you all, and it actually doesn't mean like every, everyone necessarily, whoever is inspired, um, about um, particular things that you learned from these initiatives, these projects. I mean, okay, you already mentioned, you know, learning to work through bureaucracy, um, and this is a big part of uh, sustainability work, actually, these structures. Um, but uh, yeah, so what have you learned from these experiences? You know, what have been some of the difficulties, some of the challenges, as well as some of the, the high points? I think a very uh, large challenge um, is engagement. I think um, a lot of times students don't really know, don't really pay attention to what's happening on campus. Um, they're just so busy with, the, with school, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I also think that a, a way I've tried to overcome this challenge is just by like speaking to a lot of people, like just like being friends with people and talking to them, and telling them what you're up to and what you like want, you know, sharing what they can do, um, how they can help you, how they can help the college. I think a huge part about um, being sustainable is just sharing ideas um, and speaking to others. So that's, that's my point. Other things that you've learned, yeah, sustainability here is like. Oh yeah, um, I think something that I've learned is like a different way to view sustainability. Um, I think it can be something that's super inaccessible to people, and I think that you have to work to make it accessible, especially on a college campus, which is like some of my only experience with it. Um, but I think something that, um, professor once told me is that like sustainability is about like at least sustainability channel is about making like small incremental changes in the everyday lives of students um, and that sustainability is like more than buying a specific product or doing something like that there are actual like behavioral life changes that you can do and if you give people the resources to do it then they can and will do it but they have to have the knowledge and the infrastructure to do so um, so I think that's something that made it seem a lot less daunting. I think especially with um, like a lot of people when they think about sustainability, they think about either like throwing a bottle in a recycling bin or a big like diplomatic get together like the COP26 that's happening right now. Um, and they don't see a lot of the in between. So I think, yeah, having a new idea of what sustainability can be was really valuable for me, especially with like, going out into my professional about what you all have learned, um, challenges, inspirations. <laughs> um, one thing that I've learned a lot through doing trial and being a student leader of it is just like communication and teamwork, I think, which is also something I have learned through Sustainability Channel. Um, I think the channel systems and I work really well together as a team and we do a really great job of dividing power because there are so many different sustainability efforts on campus and kind of as you've seen like we all take on different things but we're always there to support each other like for the panel we were there and for the e-waste we were all there to support so I really like that teamwork and camaraderie that we have um, but also communication I think now that I'm a senior I have like a better idea of it but I came into revolving one like the revolving one fund role um, when I was a sophomore, I think, and I think I've really grown from that, and at the beginning, I probably wasn't that great of a leader, but I've definitely learned how to, like, delegate tasks and to reach out to other people when I need support. Um, and also, Revolving Loan Fund has been a really um, special, like, networking opportunity for me. Um, like I mentioned, when I was first year, I was a student proposing to this fund, but because of that, I became more familiar with it, and everyone who was um, on the board and now I am like the student leader of it, and I know who the faculty and staff members and students on this campus are that I can reach out to for sustainability efforts. Um, and that's kind of created a really great sustainability community that I've seen on campus. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that so much of what you all are talking about, too, are precisely the sorts of skills that uh, you can get in a small or large college like Deloitte that is to say project management skills. Um, I mean, I really do this in our professional kinds of um, positions, actually, and you know, being able to be a productive collaborator, right? Oh, all, all those things. Um, 
but also you are talking about um, thinking about uh, breaking down and sustainability so that um, people can engage with it conceptually um, and meaningfully in a daily life. Um, okay, so um, so what is your advice for students interested in pursuing work in sustainability on campus? How can they get involved? And I mean, what are areas that you know we can do more with? Or you know, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. How can they get involved? And not all again, not all of you have to speak to this necessarily, but yeah, I'm sure some of you have things to say. Um, okay, well I can talk about Revolving Loan Fund. Um, so I think Sustainability Channel does a good job of creating different avenues that students can get involved with um, different sustainability efforts. So it can be as little as like going to the food waste panel or donating stuff for the e-waste drive. It can be a little bit more involved with our compost team um, or even more involved with Revolving Loan Fund. So I guess I'll talk about that specifically. Um, but. Um, the fund is there for students to use, and I know that there are a lot of students on this campus that really want to see sustainable efforts, and it's difficult, it's easy to say, like, oh, sustainability, I want to do stuff with it, but it's difficult to follow through on that, because we're all, like, college students doing, like, a million other things. Um, but Revolving Loan Fund is there to allow students to basically, like, brainstorm and think about different ways to be sustainable on campus. Um, we have like a board of students, staff and faculty, as I mentioned, and um, at any point if students are interested in doing something that can be, I don't know, as simple as like, I want to replace these light bulbs in my dorm room because they are not efficient at all, or like, I want to replace a light switch to make it automatic, um, or something bigger, like I want to make an entire building more energy efficient by like, Providing insulation or whatever. It can be whatever you want it to be, but um, Revolving Loan Fund is here to like bounce those ideas off. And um, I think a lot of times implementing a sustainable project can seem really daunting, but um, sta uh, Sustainability Channel and Revolving Loan Fund are there to help you like walk you through that process. And I think it's really a special opportunity for um, first year sophomores and juniors, but I know first years and sophomores haven't had a lot of opportunity to engage in campus um, to get kind of your but in the door of sustainability, um, I was able to do that as a freshman, and now I'm like sitting on this panel, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's one way that students can really get involved with sustainability on campus. Um, to add to that, I would say just be, just observe your surroundings. There's very little things that you can do uh, to get involved in sustainability. There's a lot happening on campus that you can get involved with. For example, you can just go to one of the work days at Buck, mm -hmm. or you can sign up uh, for uh, the compost team. It's one hour of your time each week. In, you can make small incremental changes. It can be as easy as throwing your cans and uh, what, like plastic bottles in the blue cans and making sure that you're not cross-contaminating because a lot of uh, the bins that we see around campus, people actually throw stuff, but one person cross-contaminates it and the whole thing has to go as trash and not, it cannot be recycled. So just being observant of your surroundings and seeing uh, the things around you and participating when you can, uh, can make incremental and small changes. Um, to add to that, I think that we're always hosting like different events, so you can always come and support us or just come out of pure curiosity. Also, like any of us are more than willing to listen to any of your suggestions or ideas that you may want to be implemented if you're scared to take the first step. And yeah, we're, we're always here to listen. And one thing that I'll add too is that so three three people here um, on this panel are seniors. Um, you know, we'll be looking for new assistants and new leadership. Um, and uh, truly, we are open to all kinds of suggestions. You know, right now, we've been talking a lot about the sort of co-curricular work that exists on campus. But needless to say, there's so much that we're also not talking about that you can get involved um, in with the channel, too, like alumni networks and um, thinking about um, internships and just you know learning about this, this huge 
field, right? Um, I know that we'll have programming at the Career Accelerator. I know that we have groups that are at the, um, um, the fair that is in the Science Center, the local to global um, person. So there's, there's certainly that. There's all, there are also a lot of classes that can get you involved in um, more sort of on the ground activity. Like um, I know classes in geology, Several of you took classes with Pablo where you um, did projects, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pablo Toral um, in environmental studies did that too. Um, so um, this is my last really big question, although you know, certainly I have more questions and I also really welcome um, then uh, Q&A from others. But my last question is about the future um, and the future and sustainability, I don't know. It, it's always the next. It's always the next uh, topic. I mean, you're mentioning um, uh, the um, environmental summit um, going on now about uh, global climate change. Um, but uh, you know, thinking more about campus, um, what sorts of developments in sustainability would you like to see on in campus um, in the future? You know, where would you like to? change and new initiatives? Um, what should we be working on during future years and semesters? Where should we be going? What are some developments that you might um, like to see? Um, I'm yeah. I think with sustainability for a really long time, at least like there has been like staff and student engagement, but a lot of the times it's very like disparate, you know? And there's definitely like a divide and I would love to see more like collaboration. I think a lot of students love to collaborate with students and like a faculty member or a staff member that they have like a personal relationship with or a professional relationship with. Um, but I would love to see more things similar to like when the sustainability channel does meet, there's a lot of faculty like in the room when there are those meetings and it's not just the assistants. And I think that's really like nice to see and I feel like those efforts are very much not publicized. I feel like there's a lot of students who don't know about these kinds of collaborations um, or even like your compost, you have to collaborate with Bon Appetit and talk with not only like the people who do the administrative stuff for Bon Appetit and the bureaucratic stuff, but also their chefs. And I think, um, especially with Bon Appetit, like students love to hate Bon Appetit and don't love to communicate with Bon Appetit. Um, and I feel like that like, turn that's happening now, especially since like COVID has hit, like we have to communicate with more staff at varying levels of the bureaucracy. Um, I think that's good and I want that to continue. But I want more, I feel like now a lot of faculty are getting involved, but there's less student involvement. So I want it on like both sides. I think that would be really beneficial for campus. Yeah, um, I think that there's one interesting thing that sustainability tunnel has been talking about, which I'm not sure if it'll get done when this group of tunnel assistants um, is serving, but uh, fixing recycling on campus. We have recycling bins, but they are just not being actually recycled. Um, they're, like Aubrey mentioned earlier, there's just like so much contamination in our recycling that it just all goes to the same landfill. Um, I think that's a bigger institutional change that needs to be seen on campus. Um, I think a big thing is like recycling education. A lot of people don't know what can be recycled, and there's already misinformation like around campus. Like I know with the clamshells, um, on all the, in, or at least last time I was in the house, I'm not in the house that often anymore, but last year I remember that the signs say, like, recycle your clamshells, but if your clamshells have, like, nasty pizza grease on it, do not recycle that, because now you're contaminating the recycling. So I think a lot of education is needed, but also um, speaking to, like, higher-ups, like, kind of what Sid was talking about, like, having students get involved with staff on campus um, and working as a community to, um, promote actual real recycling. Um, I would love to see that. Um, and when we get new channel systems, and, and uh, now they are still here, I'd love, love to hear the updates on that one. <laughs> yeah, other thoughts from you all about what you'd like to see in the future? Sure, 
Yeah, I think um, my suggestion would be maybe was more to RLF stuff, but I know uh, a few years ago there was a student trying to get solar panels on the powerhouse. Um, I think that was a very big project during their time, especially since they were a senior. Um, there was just a lot of work that needed to go into that um, and a lot of funding that the school itself could provide. But um, I, I think bigger changes to buildings are needed. The buildings are very old um, and not, they just could be so much more efficient and sustainable. Um, and everyone knows that and yet no one does anything about it. Um, but, and so I think, especially with like water waste, energy waste, so many, there, there's a lot of potential for change. Um, and I think it is a big project for a student to do, um, but I think as a group of students, maybe it could be possible. Uh, or again, students and staff. Mm -hmm. A large group of people will be able to change. Um, so, because it would be very beneficial for students to do the project. If I can just add to, I mean, just some info. So, if, if I have this right, I think that um, up to 16 boilers and chillers, like in the different buildings on campus, are going to be replaced gradually within the next, I think, like five years or something. I mean, you know, I might not have it exactly right, but um, you know, there's a there's a real effort to. Um, uh, ongoing effort right now to be working on these buildings and how they're heated and cooled and they're old buildings and so I mean the time is right for us all to be involved in that conversation. If I can add to it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Build a oh, I mean we can talk about climate change too if we want, but like, I don't know. <laughs> questions and, and, and so on. Um, so yes, what sorts of questions do you all have um, for our sustainability assistance or about the sustainability channel? Um, also, not just questions, suggestions too. Like what would you like to see going on? What would you like to be participating in? What can we learn from you too? So obviously, we help. Oh, and say your name, oh, yeah. too. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ryan Ganey, I'm a junior in environmental geology as well, as uh, Martina. And uh, I know we held the e waste thing last week. Um, and then, like, obviously, I saw the huge pile, but how well did we get the community of Bullwood involved in that? How did you I, get which community? How did we get like the community of Bullwood involved yeah. in that? Did we, how like, did we get, that? right, how would we get the community of Bullwood, the city, involved in? Recycling, or I guess you know, is that a, is that something to consider? Yeah. Um. So that's a great question. Uh, this time, uh, it was only uh, extended to the staff, faculty, and students. Uh, but we did have one member of the Beloit community show up. Uh, I'm not sure how they got to know about it, but uh, they did show up. We did uh, take in. They brought some batteries and a lot of office stuff. Uh, we noted down their email uh, and stuff to talk about that before. So it was interesting to see, like, we had advertised about the EVAs recycling drive uh, around the city, but it was amazing to see that someone from the community came, and I feel like this could uh, also extend to the community next time we do it. Uh, this time it was more sort of an experiment because it was the first time we were doing it. We did not want things to go sideways, you know. We wanted to do as much uh, uh, as we could handle. Uh, next time, I think we can uh, be broadened up to include the members of the community too. Yeah, I think some of it was, um, you know, you, you were sort of doing a cost analysis. I mean, that was yes. a big part of Abe's work. And 
trying to estimate, I mean, I don't know if the e-waste was anything like what you anticipated, They're trying to estimate like how much you would get, and you know, it cost, some of it costs more than others to um, recycle. Yes, so add. some items you have to pay to get recycled, uh, like monitors and TVs, those costs, like you have to pay out of your pocket to get them recycled up to a certain amount, like 20 or 30 monitors, and after that it's free. So we were trying to uh, get that into the equation. We did not uh, want, uh, because the sustainability channel has limited budget, and uh, we were not sure how we were going to fund this. Uh, so that's why we were also noting down names, and you know, we were letting people know that this might uh, cost you money. In the, like, we'll reach out to you if you need your help. And most, I think, most of the members uh, who came uh, were open uh, to the idea that. They were more than happy to help us out, but so this was something uh, we were thinking of this time. Uh, this will be a question next time again too, but I hope we can find some source of funding in somewhere uh, that can help us uh, get started and expanded. Good question. Yeah, another question, suggestions, thoughts. What are the things we should be doing? What do you want to learn more about? Yeah, yeah, let's see. How about you first and then Kate? Yeah, so tell us your name, please. My name is Christian Bowers. Um, I'm a freshman. So I'm, I'm on a cross country team and like, I know there's people in the Beloit community. I think she like reached out to us and like what she does is that like she picks up like trash like around the community and stuff. So we did that like based on like a team run. So like we had what we had was like uh, bags and stuff and then we we just running around picking up like, trash and stuff in the community. Um, I feel like maybe you guys could probably kind of implement that kind of like have a team like that that you know that runs around and you know, change. Not only on campus, but like inside the buildings too. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, kind of like making sure that like everything's being recycled correctly and stuff like that. Maybe maybe possibly helping the community out along with the doing that, but I know for that it just takes time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Krisha, you're talking about how people in um, people on the track team, on the cross team, sorry, specifically were um, picking up trash. Yeah. Could that be something that could be implemented more more broadly? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, you know, talk talk with us actually after um, at the. Um, after this panel or at the um, uh, reception uh, thing uh, that's um, three to four, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so your hand was up next. Yeah. Um, my name is Melna. I'm a senior. So I have two separate questions. So the first one is about e waste. Could you explain more about what exactly e waste recycling is and where that stuff goes? And then my second question is about compost and what are the future plans for the compost? And how are you planning on getting what I'm seeing more involved and students more involved? So, Nana, so both e waste, what is it, where does it go, and compost, how it, what's happening with it, and how is one of the team getting involved? Or else maybe future ideas too. I know we all have some. Yeah. Um, so, for the e waste, we partnered with a company called Green Waste. Uh, so, after all the e waste was collected, uh, they took it and now they'll be recycling, like bringing components down and recycling them. Uh, most of uh, it will be reused to make these product, uh, products. Uh, the rest, uh, such as lithium batteries, which you know are battery pack, they'll be uh, the toxins will be removed from them and they'll be uh, disposed of in a manner that does not hurt the environment. Uh, I'm not too sure how they're going to do it. Uh, but that, that is uh, 
uh, part of the process that uh, they do. Uh, so I can give you more information about the company uh, after the session. Yeah. Um, for compost, what we're doing is um, previously there were buckets and in special interest houses and in different um, kitchens and eating and dining areas on campus. Um, but only one of the campus kitchens actually had a compost bucket. Um, so now we are no longer doing um, compost in special interest houses unless they specifically request one, um, just because of the like, low interest that I've gauged through like, previous, like, a previous survey and reach out. Um, so now what we're doing is through Bon Appetit, we're ordering industrial-sized compost bins. And those compost bins are going to be in the Hamiltons and the Commons kitchens. Um, and instead of having the compost bins with the multiple, there's two different stacks to compost, so we have to have multiple bins. Um, so we're moving those bins from Bob, and we're going to move them on campus. We have an area in mind. Um, I'm working on getting it approved with facilities at the moment um, and with the Science Center. Um, but it would be an outdoor area where it would be visible to students. There will be like an infographic display, um, and that will also point more student attention to Bug, um, because normally it's hard for students to interact with Bug if they don't know about it and if they don't know where it is, because you have to walk off campus to get to it. Um, and normally, when you can interact with it, it's at student involvement fairs that happen every like once or twice a semester. Um, so this will help draw like attention on campus. Um, in the future, I would like to like communicate with the Merrill Community Garden, which is the Beloit, like the city of Beloit Garden, and see what we can do. Um, but that's a next semester project. For now, we're just working on getting Bug back up and running. But there were some infrastructure changes up there, um, and also getting those compost bins moved here. Um, yeah, now we're involved with Bon Appetit a bit more than this previously. There were buckets just in the dining area of Commons. Um, and there were there was a, a bucket in Java Joint, which it was like what Grace's place was before it was Grace's place. Um, and that was kind of the only like student interaction. Um, also like because of the like, college's lack of like recycling ability, because we don't have the education and the infrastructure to do that. One of the only ways that we can reduce our waste is to reduce food waste. Um, and food waste is actually like it's comprised of 40% of the U.S. food supply becomes food waste. So this is actually like a pretty big effort that we can do to not only like increase our sustainability but connect students more to their food. Um, because since we don't cook it, we're not really connected to it. Not the traditional. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good question. And. Um, actually, the um, the head of uh, Merrill Community Garden, um, who's also involved with that community action, Kayla Lowcramps, was one of the two speakers at our sustainable food panel that um, Martina and Annette organized. And uh, you know, he's hugely interested in having uh, student volunteers and having people um, get involved. And really, the Merrill Community uh, Garden is not far at all from where uh, is and it's a huge source of food for um, the white community, especially, you know, the underserved uh, community that lives in areas that are like a food, food desert. Um, so, uh, so it's really a very helpful uh, organization. Um, so I had a bunch of questions before. So way over there, right, um, it tells your name and your question, and I have, then I have Betsy, and then I have, um, Martina's roommate, don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Alina. I'm a first year. Um, when um, I forgot your name, whoever said, um, with the picking up trash. I don't Christian. Know. Christian. Yes. I didn't know if there was like a thing to do where you can have like a designated day where everyone kind of goes out and picks up trash. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love the idea of getting um, also teams involved. Making it a challenge, I think, is a, always a fun way to get people involved. And, like competitive about the trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so Betsy, you're going to be speaking next. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thank you. Um, my question really is, a, a number of years ago, or, or over the years, there have been a number of attempts by students to try to get um, the college to eliminate the use of plastic, um, because only about 10% of plastic that's recycled is actually recycled. Most of it just goes straight into, it can't be reused, it can't be recycled, and it is extremely damaging. Um, and so I'm just wondering where you're, you know, what the thinking is now around what, how to help students think about plastic, how to help the college think about plastic, how to think about other ways of, of um, delivering food, delivering water. I mean, why do we need water bottles? I mean, you all have your, you know, non, not, you know, you don't have to throw those away. They're not one-time use things. So I'm just, I'm really interested in this question. I appreciate the um, talk about um, trying to reduce waste by not producing too much food. And, and so I'm really interested in this question also about the plastic. So I'm wondering where you are with that, or whether or, or are you working on that right now? Um, before COVID, there was actually like a campaign that was going to, it was with, in the works with um, someone who has since now graduated, um, where she was like thinking of doing an education campaign. Um, she was working with Green Team to help get reusable bags to students on campus. Um, and that was actually pretty successful and even like after quarantine like post lockdown she like had a few events that the musical bags were decorated and passed out to students and all of these things um i think part of the difficulty is just like the ever changing um like situation with going up to eat and how students are served food um another part of that is also just like we all have kind of our special interests and our projects um, and we just like haven't gotten to that since she graduated um, and that's something that is definitely like on our minds I don't know if anybody else wants to talk about that more but I think yeah that's something that we're thinking about it's also definitely I would say a full-time job trying to get this campus to use less plastic um, I think Maria the alum who is working on it we're really hard to do what she did um, and definitely made it then. I think, um, yeah, Maria did a lot of work. Um, I know last year it was even more difficult to try and reduce plastic waste on campus just because of COVID. We had like bags, which people, I think we still have those, um, that people can put all their food in when they go out and come and leave. Um, same with um, Hamilton's as well. Um, so Maria did a really great job in um, providing uh, reusable bags, but also paper bags, which was like truly all of her own work and unfortunately, she, I mean, she graduated, so unfortunately that hasn't been picked up. And also I think, like Sid said, food in Bona Petite is always changing, so it's hard to like be one step ahead of them, and it's definitely hard to start an initiative. So when they are constantly changing, it's hard to um, maintain an initiative. Um, but I think, I know that other small liberal arts colleges have been successful in eliminating selling plastic water bottles, so potentially that could be a project that um, we work on next semester or next year with new students coming in, if there's a new sustainability assistant who's really interested in that, um, kind of doing research and seeing how that could be implemented in Boyd's campus would be really interesting to see. Um, also, COVID has encouraged the use of those takeout boxes, the plastic containers you get at Commons. Uh, I feel like uh, it's not a lot of education about how they can be recycled. Uh, Born Apathy does say they can be recycled, but they don't tell you that you have to rinse it out and then throw it in the recycling bin for it to get recycled. And that is also a major cause of cross contamination in, in a lot of areas, uh, especially in the powerhouse. Now, not, they have put up signs, but people in hurry, like, it, stuff happens. And uh, so, as Martina was mentioning, the eco-containers, those could be a thing for eliminating the use of those single-use plastic containers and actually uh, getting people using uh, a different box. But we know a Born Appetit does not allow us taking those container containers inside commons, uh, or like water bottles inside commons. So that is uh, a subject we can negotiate with Born Appetit and uh, actually have see some results. 
Yeah, I think one, one issue that comes up repeatedly that's something that perhaps you know, we all as a community can consider is um, how maybe sustainability channel assistance, like other bodies can um, kind of position themselves so that they are, um, so that Bon Appetit is, is a bit more accountable to us because the contracts that, you know, are done um, by uh, you know, the, the president and facilities and, um, you know, the VPs of operations and so on. And I mean, she, you know, Lola tries hard uh, to be responsive, but still these institutions are going to, you know, turn around, um, you know, bureaucratically in their own ways. And so there's a way to think about those structures um, that's, that's helpful. There's more like a political science background as well, right? Uh, how power operates. Okay, so um, one last question. Yes. Um, well, I was just, that's kind of a suggestion to you, I guess. Um, but I was wondering if like the compost team has considered kind of doing different types of composting as like also um, like an education also, like warm, I know that warm composting is a thing. Um, and like we could set up different stations of like compost to see even like if people want to do um, different soil testing of how fast it compost or like, I feel like it was an educational aspects too. Yeah. Or are we just sticking to the regular composting? So different kinds of composting, you know. What about it? <laughs> I mean, um, at least in my time here, both of them had the, the kind of like just one kind of compost where it's like just food waste. Um, but like vermicomposting and like worm composting is definitely an option. Um, I think the big challenge is that before like these really cool compost initiatives can be put in place, there has to be the infrastructure for compost to like sustain itself. Um, like I am like myself and Amy and Martina, like we are looking for underclassmen to be able to pass on these projects to after we graduate. Um, and so what happened to me where like the person who ran compost was a senior and was like, okay, when the pandemic isn't as scary anymore and you can do this again, do this again. But then like I wasn't told how to get this started up again. So now it's been like a journey of figuring out how to do this project, um, which has been super helpful. Um, bureaucracy, very important. Um, but also, yeah, no, there's all of these really awesome ideas with compost and like connecting people with their food that are opportunities that can happen. But I think until those are possible, like for those to be possible, there has to be the basic infrastructure in place for students to notice compost, for students to be aware of what, the, what food is compostable. Um, and yeah, I think there's just so many cool things with food um, that like I want to be able to do and I want the compost team to be able to do. Um, right now our big focus is just getting it up and running again and making sure students are aware of it. I bet you were going to say something about composting too. Yes, also if you're thinking about like different ways of composting and seeing how the rate of compost it eats, I think that is something the geology department can help us with. Uh, get that. I went here. Yes. <laughs> right? You, you have your class on soil. Yes. Yeah, this is soil class next semester. Ah. Maybe we can uh, <laughs> have some structure where we can test that sure. product out. Because <laughs> yeah, we definitely we do have like bins at different stages of the compost the process. Um, so that's yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, so um, I really want to thank um, all of our sustainability assistants. It was lovely. And I want to thank our wonderful audience too. And I also want to mention, well, two things that um, we will be migrating now to the second floor of the powerhouse for a channel's um, involvement there. So if you'd like to get more involved, um, you know, come find us there or come chat with us after this. Um, and we also have uh, info about a revolving loan fund. If you have projects that you want to see, um, you know, happening, uh, you know, we want to work with you all, but let's get a hand um, to our panelists.